Alrighty, so today we are going to cover lesson one of your flight training syllabus, which is exercises four and five, taxing, attitudes, and movements. So we're going to cover what is taxiing, how to maneuver the aircraft on the ground, our proper taxi controls as wind, and the range of attitudes and movements in the airplane for the air part of the lesson. Uh, the references for this lesson is going to be your flight training manual. So the goal is just to learn how to safely maneuver the aircraft on the ground. Um, we want to learn the proper technique used while taxiing in wind, as well as the different attitudes in the airplane and how to produce these attitudes using the different movements. Um, so basically the reasoning behind this, you got to be able to get the airplane from the parking spot on the apron to the runway every single flight we got to be able to do it safely without creating hazard um, and then attitudes and movements these are really the foundations of flying every lesson is going to build on your your attitudes and movements so that is where we'll begin alrighty so before we get started we'll relate flying a plane to driving your car for something familiar for you. Um, if you want to pause the video at any point, answer the questions, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring the answers up. So do airplanes have brakes? Yes, they do. So we're going to cover where those brakes are located, how to use them, when we use them. Our next question, what do you want to do before proceeding past a stop sign while driving your car? Well, obviously you're going to come to a stop. You're going to look both ways and make sure it's safe before we you proceed through it's the exact same thing while you're taxiing an airplane you're going to look where you're going make sure your wings are clear a couple definitions before we get started when i refer to taxiing that's just going to be essentially driving the airplane on the ground so anytime we're on the ground it's called taxiing the horizon is where the earth meets the sky you'll see a nice defined line on a clear day the attitude is the aircraft's position relative to that horizon. So it may be on the horizon, above it, below it. The movement is going to be the motion of the, the aircraft about an axis. Whether if the nose is below the horizon, we want to get it above the horizon. We have to move the airplane, so this would be a movement. We'll cover the different movements. Like I mentioned, starting on the ground here, we have... Uh, we'll start with controlling the speed. So the, the speed of your taxi is going to be controlled with the throttle. So if you increase your throttle, the airplane is going to start to roll faster. And if you want to slow down, you're going to reduce that throttle all the way to idle. So use that throttle to manage the speed of the aircraft. Uh, the speed you're looking for is like the pace of a jog. So we don't not too fast, not too slow. Always make sure you're looking in both directions while you're maneuvering around. Um, if you're at throttle idle, maybe a little bit of a down sloping taxiway, uh, and you start to roll too fast, this is a scenario where you would want to use some brakes, uh, but we do not want to use brakes with throttle at the same time. Um, so if you're, you want to come to a stop, first you're going to bring that throttle all the way to idle, and then you're going to push the brakes by squeezing the top of the rudder pedals with your toes. Here is a diagram showing a, the rudder pedals of the 172. So if you look at the top section of the, the pedals here, it is the brake section. So you would slide your toes up, press those brakes simultaneously with even pressure, and the aircraft would come to a stop straight ahead. The rudder pedals also control the turning. So you can see the bottom section of the pedal that steps out. That would be the rudder section. We're going to talk about that right now. Um, and how to turn the aircraft on the ground. But if, if you notice the, the picture on the right here with these Nikes, the pilot has their heels on the floor, and this is to avoid what's called riding the brakes. So when you're turning, you don't want to have your toes on the brakes um, to accidentally be holding them on slightly, requiring more power, wearing out your brakes. So to avoid that, you will keep your heels on the floor and just keep your toes on the rudder section. 
So let's talk about turning the aircraft. So the primary way to turn the aircraft is to use the rudder pedals. So we keep our heels on the floor. Um, if you press the left rudder, the airplane's going to turn to the left. And if you press the right, it's going to turn to the right. Now, if you wanted to do a tight turn into a parking spot or out of a parking spot, you can use what's called differential braking. And this would be using one of the brakes to assist in the turn. So you'd have left rudder, you'd be holding the left brake in this scenario, and the aircraft is going to pivot around that tire. It's going to allow you to do um, a tight turn. It does have some wear and tear on the tires and require a higher power setting. So we try to avoid using differential braking if we can, but sometimes it's required to do a tight turn. Okay, the last part about taxiing on the ground, we want to talk about what we can do with our control yoke or the steering wheel if we relate it to a car. Um, it is possible for the wind to pick the aircraft up. You can see a picture here of a damaged wing where the wind picked this aircraft right up and, and it hit the wing off the ground when it was parked. So it is possible and it's important to use the proper taxi controls with the yoke in order to keep the airplane on the ground. So this diagram is straight out of your flight training manual and it shows your yoke position relative to the wind. So if we have a quartering front left tailwind, or sorry, that would be a headwind, you're just going to use up aileron on the left wing and neutral elevator, so you would turn into the wind. Turn the yoke to the left from a front right quartering headwind, you're just going to turn the yoke to the right and have a neutral elevator. Looking at the quartering tailwinds, we would use down aileron on the right hand wing from a rear right tailwind. In order to do this, you're going to go forward with the control and turn it to the left. So you can use the saying dive with the wind. So you want to dive to where the wind is going. Um, and the same is true for a quartering left tailwind. You're going to go forward and right with the controls, uh, dive to where that wind is going. So you can use those sayings to help you re remember that taxi input. So a couple review questions. Once again, if you'd like, you could pause the video, answer them, and then we'll bring them up here. So how fast should we taxi? That's going to be a slow jog. How do we slow down our taxi? Well, if we just want to slow down, all we're going to do is reduce the throttle to idle. How do we press the brakes? You would use your toes on the top of the rudder pedals. And to avoid riding the brakes, you want to keep your heels on the floor and only have your toes on the bottom of the pedal. Uh, where are we going to put the controls if the wind is from the northeast and you're facing north? So if you say north is directly in front of you right now, east would be 90 degrees to your right, so the wind's coming from about 2 o'clock. We have a right headwind, so we're just going to turn into the wind, so you'll use right yoke and neutral elevator. Okay, now for the in-air portion, let's talk about the attitudes and movements. Starting with the different attitudes of the aircraft, we have the cruise attitude, also known as the reference. It could be nose up, it could be nose down, and you have a left bank and a right bank. So all of the attitudes are relative to the horizon, like we mentioned in the definition. Now, to go from cruise to nose up or nose down, we have to move the airplane. So that m movement is called pitching. We pitch the nose up and we pitch the nose down. Also from cruise to get to a left bank or a right bank, you have to move the airplane. That movement is called rolling. So you roll into a left bank attitude, you roll into a right bank attitude. So now let's talk about each of these individually and note the differences between them. So here's a diagram showing you the cruise attitude. Uh, we'd be in level flight with a constant airspeed, constant altitude. You'd have your power set to cruise. Your wings are parallel to the horizon. And if you look forward, you're going to see about one-third ground or two-thirds sky. And if you note the distance from your nose to the horizon, it would be approximately three fingers or four fingers if you were to hold your hand out in front of your face. Uh, and that's going to establish your cruise attitude. Now you can see we're in a nose-up attitude. This nose is well above the horizon. 
In this, we're going to see a lot more sky and less ground. And if you look at the side, your wingtips are going to be at an incline up. So the nose up attitudes are very common during the takeoff or any time that the airplane's climbing. A nose down attitude. Now you can see the nose is well down below the horizon. You see a lot more ground in front of you, less sky. If you were to look at your wingtips, they would be decline down towards the horizon. And a nose down attitude is very common on approach to land or anytime the aircraft's in a descent. So to achieve the nose up and nose down attitudes, we have to pitch the airplane. So the pitching movement is about the lateral axis of the aircraft, which goes wingtip to wingtip and it is controlled with the elevator. So the elevator is the control surface on the rear attached to our horizontal stabilizer. On our control yoke, if you want to pitch the nose up, you would pull back on the yoke. If you want to pitch the nose down, you would gently push forward on the yoke. All right, next we have our banked attitudes. Looking here, we have a left bank attitude. Um, and you can see your aircraft's cowling or the nose is at an incline to the horizon if you were to look at your left your left wing would be pointing down at the ground your right wing would be pointing up into the sky and if you maintain a left banked attitude it's gonna begin a left hand turn now we got a right banked attitude you can see the airplane uh, is at an angle to the right relative to this horizon. Our right wing would be down low, pointing at the ground. Our left wing is high. If you maintain that right bank attitude, you're gonna result in a right hand turn. You can see here, the horizon is a little bit more obscured just because we have a lake over the water. Uh, and the blue on blue is a little tricky to pick out. So one thing you wanna be careful of on uh, a day like today is that you're not using a false horizon such as a shoreline, because it's going to give you an improper attitude reference point. We always want to go back to that horizon and use the horizon as our reference. Okay, so to get into a left and right bank attitude, we have to roll the airplane. Now rolling is the movement about the longitudinal axis, which goes from the nose to the tail. The control surface is our ailerons. And to achieve a left bank attitude or to roll to the left, you just roll the steering or yoke to the left. If you roll to the right, you're gonna end up in a, the yoke to the right, you're gonna be in a right bank attitude. Okay, so we'll just go over review questions here. What movement produces a nose up and nose down attitude? Well, the movement would be pitching the control surface that produces the pitching movement is going to be your elevator. The movement that provides a banked attitude is going to be a roll and the control surface producing a rolling movement is going to be your ailerons. Okay, so the last movement we have is called the yaw movement and normally this movement is prevented using the rudder um, because we want to fly straight with the tail following the nose. Yaw would be, uh, you'd be able to pick up on yaw if the, the nose was just moving left or right without any roll input. And it is controlled by the rudders and our rudder pedals. So here's five causes of unwanted yaw that we'll get into. Today we're just going to focus on the slipstream. So the five listed here are adverse yaw, also known as aileron drag, slipstream, P factor, short for propeller factor, also known as asymmetric thrust, gyroscopic precession, and torque. So if we look at slipstream, sitting in the pilot's seat, the prop rotation is clockwise, and this ribbon is going to show the airflow coming around the airplane fuselage and pushing on the tail of the airplane. Now with the Air pushing on the left hand side of the tail, trying to push it to the right, the nose is going to want to yaw to the left. The slipstream is going to be mo most noticeable 
when you're going from a low power setting to a high power setting such as the takeoff. Um, so today I'm going to demonstrate the slipstream for you during the takeoff roll so you can uh, witness the yaw produced by slipstream. A uh, couple safety items for today is when you're taxiing, it is vital that you make sure it's clear prior to start uh, your roll on the taxi. So before you release the brakes, you want to look to your left and right, make sure that it's clear. And it's a good idea to verbalize that. So you'll say clear left or clear to the right. You could turn on your taxi light to let no everybody know around you that you're ready to move. And that'll just remind them to stay clear. Remember that your wings stick out a lot, so leave room for obstacles such as buildings or planes, uh, the fuel pump, or people out on the apron. Uh, one method you can use to keep your wings clear of obstacles is look at these shadows. And as long as your shadows are clear, the wing is not going to hit the object. Lastly, for the in-air portion, we always want to confirm who has control. This is going to be done between the instructor and the student. Um, when the instructor is flying, they will say, I have control, and the, the student would respond, you have control. And when the student is flying, the instructor is going to say, you have control, and the student would respond, I have control, just to ensure that they're not fighting each other on the controls um, and that somebody's always flying the airplane and nobody is assuming it's the other individual. Okay, so last review question before we head up flying. Our brakes are located on the top of the rudder pedals. The movement that produces a nose up attitude is pitching. The control surface that produces a rolling movement is the ailerons. Uh, slipstream yaw is created by the air coming around the fuselage off the propeller. It wants to push the tail of the aircraft to the right, resulting in a left yaw. Now it would be corrected by using right rudder. A reference attitude is also known as the cruise attitude, and it can be recognized by using one-third ground, two-thirds sky. Okay, so today we cover taxiing, attitudes, and movements. The next lesson is going to be straight and level flight. Your homework will be to read up on that in the flight training manual, and we will go over a straight and level flight prior to our next flight. Alrighty, so if you have any questions about this lesson, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will answer those for you.